Scientists have recently made an intriguing discovery of peculiar creatures dwelling within the expansive landscapes of the Grand Canyon. These entities are unlike anything observed before. Upon closer examination, peculiarities such as misaligned feet on a display prompt astonishment. The findings range from nightmarish beings to ancient footprints dating back hundreds of millions of years. Here we present the top 10 astounding discoveries in the Grand Canyon that have captivated the world. 10. An Ancient Egyptian Civilization In the early 20th century, an astonishing discovery was reportedly made in the Grand Canyon, and its allure persists, captivating scientists globally. According to an April 5, 1909, front-page article in the Arizona Gazette titled Explorations in the Grand Canyon, a clandestine location within the canyon revealed an ancient city, estimated to be thousands of years old. Positioned 2,000 FT above the Colorado River, this underground citadel purportedly yielded artifacts, hieroglyphics, and mummified remains of Egyptian origin. The discovery was attributed to a Smithsonian-funded explorer named G.E. Kincaid, guided by Professor S.A. Jordan. Initially hailed as the oldest archaeological site in the United States and deemed the world's most valuable, the underground city was said to accommodate up to 50,000 inhabitants at its peak. Notable finds included a cross-legged idol resembling Buddha, copper weapons, granaries with seeds, and various statues. However, skepticism emerged as the story unfolded. The Smithsonian Institution disavowed any record of Kincaid or Jordan, leading some to assert a deliberate erasure of their names from history. Critics questioned the plausibility of an Egyptian civilization in Arizona and pointed out the absence of released Egyptian artifacts for public scrutiny. Despite these challenges to the narrative's credibility, proponents argued that a government-sponsored cover-up might explain the inconsistencies. The controversy surrounding Kincaid and Jordan's purported discovery endures, remaining one of the most intriguing and debated stories emerging from the Grand Canyon. 9. Ancient Fossil Footprints Around 313 million years ago, a significant find in the Grand Canyon unveiled fossil footprints that told a captivating story. A large reptile had traversed a coastal sand dune, leaving clawed footprints forever etched in time. The tracks were preserved remarkably well due to a light dew and wind-blown sand. Fast forward to 2016, and a Norwegian geology professor, Alan Krill, and his students stumbled upon the same tracks while on their annual field trip along Bright Angel Trail. Encased within a fallen boulder, the footprints appeared surprisingly fresh. Professor Krill photographed the prints and shared them with geologist Steve Rowland for further analysis. Roland, after meticulous inspection, determined that the creature responsible for the tracks was likely the size of a modern-day chuckwalla, measuring between 15 to 13 inches long. The analysis revealed that the prints were made by two different creatures, probably of the same species, with the second imprint occurring later than the first. The fallen boulder was traced back to the Monarch Formation from a nearby cliff exposure, aiding in determining the age of the footprints. This discovery provided a unique glimpse into the evolution of amniotes, challenging previous beliefs that these creatures required water for survival. The coastal dune setting indicated that these amniotes adapted to land as soon as they evolved. Moreover, the lateral sequence gait observed in the footprints a distinctive walking pattern where the right rear leg is followed by the right front leg and vice versa provided valuable insights into the evolution of locomotion. This lateral sequence gait, previously thought to have evolved a few million years ago, was dated back to 313 million years ago, reshaping our understanding of when this locomotive pattern originated. Among the intriguing discoveries in the Grand Canyon, these ancient footprints have garnered significant attention from the scientific community, being recognized as the oldest recorded vertebrate tracks ever found in the ancient landscape. 8. Shasta – Ground Sloth Remains In the past, the Grand Canyon differed significantly from its arid landscape today. During the last ice age, this vast terrain was cooler and wetter, supporting lush vegetation and providing an ideal habitat for large mammals such as the Shasta ground sloth. 
Although this intriguing species is now extinct, the Grand Canyon has preserved remnants that offer valuable insights into its physiology. In July 1936, specialists, including archaeologist Mark Raymond Harrington and geologist Edward Shank, were dispatched by the National Park Service to explore Rampart Cave, renowned for housing Shasta ground sloth fossils. The cave became a treasure trove of fossilized remains and dung from these creatures. The initial expedition marked the beginning of archaeological exploration and subsequent excavations in 1942, led by Remington Kellogg of the Smithsonian Institution, unveiled a wealth of materials. Deep within Rampart Cave, archaeologists discovered evidence of the sloth's habitation over thousands of years. Among the findings were piles of sloth dung, skulls, bones, hair, skin, and other soft parts. The Shasta ground sloth, distinct from modern tree sloths, was notably larger, some reaching the size of elephants, although those in Rampart Cave were closer in size to bears. The intriguing aspect of this discovery was tempered by a somber note. Scientists suggest that human activities, particularly excessive hunting, likely drove the Shasta ground sloth to extinction, rather than climate change. This realization underscores humanity's role in shaping the fate of species. Despite the Shasta ground sloth's disappearance, the Grand Canyon serves as a time capsule, preserving ancient remains and offering a glimpse into an era when these fascinating animals thrived. These findings highlight the significance of understanding and preserving our natural history, providing valuable lessons about the coexistence of species and the impact of human actions on Earth's biodiversity. 7. Split Twig Figurines Approximately 4,000 years ago, prehistoric humans inhabited the challenging landscapes of the Grand Canyon, forming communities, hunting, and adapting to their environment. While pinpointing the exact period of human settlement in the canyon is challenging, various pieces of evidence have been uncovered, providing insights into ancient life. One remarkable find is the split twig figurines discovered in several canyon caves. The initial discovery of these figurines occurred in a Colorado River gorge and a rock shelter in Walnut Canyon near Flagstaff, Arizona during the 1930s. Crafted by intricately twisting and wrapping split willow twigs, these figurines depicted four-legged animals. Carbon dating analysis estimates their age to be over 4,000 years challenging previous notions about the timeline of human activity in the canyon. The appearance of these figurine makers around 4,000 years ago, followed by their disappearance, intrigued scientists. The purpose of these figurines remains a mystery. Some scientists speculate that they may have played a role in an elaborate hunting ritual, ensuring successful expeditions and ample food for early human communities. Caves containing the figurines also housed remains of big game animals, supporting the hypothesis of a connection to hunting rituals. Alternatively, some believe that the caves, where these figurines were found, served as entrances to the underworld, according to the beliefs of hunter-gatherer communities. Despite the uncertainties surrounding their purpose, these split-twig figurines stand as a testament to the artistic intelligence of early humans. Even in their rudimentary state, our prehistoric ancestors crafted intriguing pieces that have endured for thousands of years, continuing to captivate and astound us. Today, these artifacts serve as a unique window into the creative expressions of ancient human communities. To explore more about split twig figurines and related archaeological discoveries, you can visit the Arizona State Museum's website. 6. Ancient Rock Art the ancient civilizations that once thrived in the Grand Canyon may have vanished thousands of years ago, but their enduring legacy lives on through remarkable rock art scattered across the landscape. Created by the early humans who once inhabited these rugged terrains, these rock artworks serve as a canvas for expressing creativity and etching enduring stories. Rock art in the Grand Canyon can be broadly categorized into two types, pictographs and petroglyphs. Pictographs involve the use of pigments extracted from plants, while petroglyphs are rock carvings or etchings made by chipping away dark desert varnish 
to expose the lighter rock beneath. Desert varnish is the thin black layer covering many rocks in the desert southwest. These ancient artists manipulated rocks to craft enduring artworks that have captivated observers for many years. The rock art varies from easily interpretable depictions to more cryptic messages that pose challenges in deciphering. Some are abstract, inviting personal interpretation. For instance, a stroll along the Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon reveals a remarkable gallery of deer pictographs painted in red beneath an overhanging ledge. These deer pictographs, believed to be around 4,000 years old, mark the path down into the side canyon, known as Mallory's Grotto. The ancient rock art contains elements from the Archaic period with an integration of the Konya culture. Charcoal inscriptions on the walls are attributed to the Havasupai tribe, one of the oldest continuously existing tribes in the Grand Canyon. The Havasupai people, who used the trail to access the Indian Garden, left their mark on the canyon. Unfortunately, after the Grand Canyon became a national park, the Havasupai were displaced from their ancestral home, leaving behind rock art and a rich cultural heritage. 5. Grand Canyon Caverns In 1927, Walter Peck embarked on a treasure hunt in the Grand Canyon with hopes of finding gold. Instead, he stumbled upon a remarkable discovery just a few miles east of Peach Springs, the Grand Canyon Caverns. These caverns, among the largest dry caverns in the United States, are situated at an elevation of approximately $5,500 FT and boast a depth exceeding 210 FT. Although Peck didn't uncover gold, he recognized the potential of the cave system as a tourist attraction. With astute business acumen, he transformed the caverns into a captivating site for travelers. For a modest fee of 25 cents, visitors could experience the wonders of the caverns, including a view of a purported caveman. However, a twist in the story emerged when it was revealed that these cavemen were two individuals who had tragically perished in the winter of 1917 to 1918. The men, harvesting firewood on the hilltops, sought shelter in the cave during an unexpected snowstorm. Exposed to bitter cold for three days, they succumbed to influenza. Due to frozen ground, they were initially buried within the caverns. Their remains were later discovered and properly identified in 1935. In collaboration with the Civilian Conservation Corps and Works Progress Administration, Peck established an agreement to construct a new entrance to the caverns in 1935. Subsequently, in 1962, a 2 on 10 FT shaft was blasted into the limestone and an elevator was installed, further enhancing accessibility. 4. Uranium The Grand Canyon has faced a worrisome level of exploitation, particularly since the 1950s when uranium was first discovered at the site. Uranium deposits were initially found near the south rim of the canyon in the Orphan Copper Mine in 1950. Subsequent discoveries revealed uranium in collapsed breccia pipes in northern Arizona, formed when overlying rocks collapse into caverns. The mining activities, predominantly for uranium, have raised concerns due to the environmental damage inflicted on the region. Indigenous tribes and various communities dependent on the area have consistently called for an end to mining activities, emphasizing the threat to the ecosystem and the infringement on their cultural heritage. Despite widespread opposition from native communities, local governments, hunters, and conservation groups, mining activities persisted. In 2012, there seemed to be a breakthrough when Interior Secretary Ken Salazar issued a 20-year ban on mining in the region, preventing new efforts to mine uranium on one million acres of public land within and around the Grand Canyon. However, the effectiveness of this ban has been questionable. As of the video's making, nearly 600 mining claims still exist on national forests and other public lands around the Grand Canyon. Despite legislative attempts to permanently ban new mining around the park, the battle against exploitation continues, posing a significant challenge. For the tribes residing in the canyon, the fight against mining is crucial, as the continued impact would be devastating to both the environment and the cultural heritage that has endured for generations. 3. New Insect Species 
In addition to the archaeological discoveries, scientists have stumbled upon several previously undiscovered creatures, which emerged from the Grand Canyon, shocking the world. In a cave on the north rim of the Grand Canyon, these never-before-seen creatures have evolved away from the outside world and are as strange as can be. Among them are the pseudo-scorpions, which bear a striking resemblance to typical scorpions, but with some notable differences. Due to evolving in total darkness, they have adapted by losing their eyes, and unlike true scorpions, they lack a stinger in their pincers. According to J. Judson Wynn, an assistant research professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at Northern Arizona University who conducted an extensive study on these creatures, they are unlike anything previously seen or heard of. He emphasized that the cave housing these pseudoscorpions has produced the widest diversity of cave-adapted arthropods of any known cave in the canyon. The researchers initially discovered these species during expeditions between 2005 and 2007, but it took years before their uniqueness was determined. The creatures have now been taxonomically identified as Hesperoans bradybi and Tuberoshernes confusus. They are typically about 0.12 inches long and feed on tiny invertebrates like springtails, book lice, mites, and possibly some cricket nymphs, all of which are just a quarter the length of a grain of rice. However, the most intriguing aspect of these pseudoscorpions is their social behavior. Scientists have observed that they use their pincers to hitchhike to new locations by grasping onto other animals, including birds, mammals, and even other insects. This unique behavior allows them to utilize other animals as vehicles, facilitating faster movement and aiding in mating and gene dispersal over greater distances than they could achieve on their own legs. 2. Pink Rattlesnake The Grand Canyon is home to a diverse array of snakes, with the rattlesnake being the only venomous species found in abundance in various locations throughout the canyon. Among the rattlesnake species present, such as the Mojave Green, the Great Basin, the Southwestern Speckled Rattlesnake, the Northern Black-Tailed Rattlesnake, and the Hopi, the most intriguing is the Pink Rattlesnake. The Pink Rattlesnake, unique to the Grand Canyon, inhabits the Inner Gorge and the Corridor of the Colorado River. Its pink coloring is an evolutionary adaptation that helps it blend seamlessly into its surroundings, making it less noticeable to both predators and prey. Despite its vibrant hue, visitors to the park may sometimes overlook its presence due to this camouflage. Despite its venomous nature, the pink rattlesnake is generally docile and won't attack humans unless provoked. Typically ranging from 16 to 54 inches in length, these snakes possess potent venom that ensures the demise of their prey. Scientists have identified a genetic linkage between the pink rattlesnake and two other snake species, the western diamondback and the pit viper. Due to their venomous nature, encounters with these snakes in the wild are best avoided as their bites can be dangerous to humans and other animals. 1. Indigenous Tribes Before the Grand Canyon became a national park, numerous indigenous tribes had established their communities in the region for over a millennium. Despite the seemingly inhospitable environment, these tribes thrived, and today, Six main tribes still inhabit the territories within and around the Grand Canyon. For these tribes, the Grand Canyon is not just a tourist attraction or an archaeological wonderland. It's their home, a place of spiritual significance where their culture and traditions have been rooted since time immemorial. The six tribes generally associated with the Grand Canyon are the Hualapai, Havasupai, Navajo, Hopi, Paiute, and Zuni. Each of these groups has resided on the Colorado Plateau long before European colonization, boasting distinct cultures, heritage, and a deep connection to the Grand Canyon. The Hualapai, whose name translates to People of the Pine, have inhabited the canyon for centuries and remain one of the largest indigenous tribes in the area, with an estimated population of around 2,300. They historically occupied up to one million acres of land, primarily featuring pinyon juniper forests. The Havasupai, known as the People of the Blue-Green Waters, derive their name from the stunning waterfalls of Havasu Canyon, their ancestral home. 
With approximately 400 members today, they continue to uphold their legacy within the canyon. The Navajo tribe, one of the largest, boasts over 300,000 members, making it the largest reservation in North America. Historically hunters and gatherers, the Navajo adopted farming practices and have a rich cultural heritage intertwined with the landscape of the Grand Canyon. These tribes, along with the Hopi, Paiute, and Zuni, share a profound connection to the Grand Canyon, viewing it not just as a geological marvel, but as a sacred place that sustains their culture and spirituality. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe for my channel. Thank you.